So in this video, we're going to talk about counterweight propellers. And when we're talking about counterweights, we're talking about these items here. So, so the arrow weight that is added on to the propeller. So you can see the weight here, there's one here, there's one here, and there's one here. So there's one for each blade of the propeller. Here is a picture of a counterweight propeller. And I've tried to replicate it over here. So here's the hub here in grey. This is the counterweight here in red. This is the blade um, root. Here is uh, the blade. And when the blade rotates, it's going to rotate around the axis of rotation. So if you can visualize a line coming out like here, uh, the axis rotation. And when the plane the propeller blades rotate, it's going to rotate in the plane of rotation. So here is the plane of rotation here. So the propeller blade is going to rotate around this axis in the plane of rotation. So when it does rotate, then the centrifugal force will uh, emanate from the point where the plane of rotation and the axis of rotation cross. So we're going to get a cent uh, centrifugal force coming out through this counterweight. Um, as such. Now that force can be broken down into the different constituent parts for each of the axes. So there will be one coming out along the um, lateral axis, then there will be one along the longitudinal axis, and there will be one along the vertical axis. And it's these last two vectors that uh, are of interest to us here. So if I replicate them down uh, here, here we're, we're looking in on the, on, the, on the propeller. There's our counterweight, there's our propeller blade, there's our plane of rotation, there's our axis of rotation, and there's these two, two vectors. And you can see that this component over here wants to pull the counterweight up and if this is going up because it's connected to the propeller it's going to cause the whole propeller to go to a more coarse position so let's have a look at it here so here's our uh, propeller inside the hub and as the propeller is is rotating so if, if you can think of it rotating about its axis of rotation there will be a centrifugal force coming out through the CEG of the counterweight. This is the force due to the counterweight now, not the propeller itself. And we just saw that that can be broken down into the longitudinal and vertical component. And this component here in particular is going to cause the counterweight to move up. So when the counterweight moves up, it pulls the blade into a more coarse position. Let's look at that again. So when the counterweight moves up, it pulls the blade into a more coarse position. Okay, how do we get it to a fine position? Well, to bring the propeller blade back to a fine position, we use oil pressure. So oil comes from the engine, it's pumped out here into the hub. It's going to act against this piston here. So the oil pressure then is going to push this back. And as it does, this is going to bring the propeller forward. So we can see the oil pressure has brought the propeller to a more fine blade angle. Let me look at it again. Sorry. So when we add the oil pressure, it brings the propeller blade to a more fine end. What happens then if we move the remove the uh, oil pressure? Well, when we remove the oil pressure, centrifugal force it's still acting on the still acting on the counterweight. It has never gone away. So when we've no oil pressure to counteract it, then the propeller will just be brought back to a more coarse position. So in summary. The counterweights move the propeller to a coarse pitch, and the oil pressure moves the propeller to a fine pitch. We 
call this type of propeller a single acting propeller because the oil was acting only on one side of this piston. Right? There wasn't oil pressure on both sides, there was only oil pressure on one side. So that's why we call it a single 